Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Chase here at Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thank you so much for checking in. So today I have the lineup of tires from Hoosier. I'm gonna walk you through the different options that are available. I will talk about who these tires are designed for. And I'm gonna give you my personal feedback. So call it a ride review if you want, because I've got a chance to spend time on these tires. And also another rider here in Utah, his name's Gavin Bruff. He's a local pro. He raced pro nationals. He shreds on a dirt bike. He actually also got a set of these and he wrote on those. So I'll share you his feedback as well as we go through. Now, the first thing that I wanna say before we dive into the features of these tires is you need to understand who Hoosier makes their tires for because I had a, long, a lengthy conversation with them and they're gonna tell you right away, they build race tires and they're more focused on performance rather than longevity. They want you to expect when you buy a set of their tires to know that you're getting excellent traction, great performance, but they also want you to understand that you're not gonna get the same durability as other competitors' tires. And they're okay admitting that because again, they're, they're focused more on performance, which I think is cool. In fact, I talked to an ex-pro rider not too long ago who raced pro supercross, and he told me that he has ridden on Hoosier tires, and he said that this was the closest thing that he had ridden to a spec tire that he had used in racing, just to kind of give you an idea of the, for, the performance that you're getting. Now, they are expensive. You know, you're about 120 bucks for a rear, about 110 for a front, and you're not gonna get that same durability. But if you're serious about racing, if you're planning to go somewhere and you're gonna be riding for just a weekend, and you're just looking for, you know, performance, that's who these are for. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the different options. And then I'll give you some of my feedback and Gavin's as well. So first up, we'll talk about the rear. So you have the ST1. This is your scoop tire. This is the rear tire that Gavin rode at a track here in Utah called Bunker Hill MX. Very sandy track, but does get a firmer base. He rode with this on his 250 and he swept the pro class that weekend. He absolutely crushed it. I asked about his feedback. He said that it did really well. It did what he would expect. It gave great forward drive. But what he liked, though, is that that track, Bunker Hill, it does start to get a firmer base. And a lot of times with a scoop tire, you, there's that sacrifice, right? You get really good forward drive, but you give up a little of that grip when the bike's leaned over going through corners. But he really didn't notice any performance that he was giving away when the track started to firm up. So he was a big fan of this rear tire. And then you get to the IMX 20, the 25, and the 30. Now, what's cool about their three options I just told you about is that they all have the exact same tread design. The only difference between the three is with the tread compound. The INX20 has the softest compound, and that, they say, is like an indoor tire. I'm talking like arena cross, super cross, that type of riding. That's who the INX20 is for. And I've gone three, or through all three tires and just felt the rubber with my hands. And yes, you can feel with that IMX20, it is a soft rubber compound. So just know if you were to buy that tire and then go ride in intermediate or hard pack conditions on an outdoor track, it's not gonna last you very long. So just something to keep in mind. But then you have the IMX25, which is gonna be their intermediate tire. This is the tire that I just raced both front and rear at a track here in Utah called 80 Acres of MX. Very clay-based, gets really deep ruts, but does get square edgy. And later in the day when they throw water down, it gets greasy and slick. So I wanna share some of my feedback as well. But IMX 25, intermediate, and then you have the IMX 30, which is gonna be their hard pack terrain. But again, same tread design, just using a firmer compound, which is gonna give you more durability or tread life out of that one. But they all have the same carcass construction as well. Now, here's my findings and my thoughts on the rear tire. So like I said, I just rode on the 25. I've also ridden on the 30 as well. And just like Hoosier says, it gives you really good performance. This tire does everything that I would expect. The forward drive is really good. The braking is predictable. What I noticed about this tire, especially when I raced at 80 acres, is that it allows me or it gave me confidence that as I was coming into corners, I felt like I had really good traction on these side lugs and I could start to get on the gas early, accelerate out of the corner. And I just never had any of those moments where I just felt like, the tire was just gonna break loose all of a sudden where it was unpredictable. It just felt predictable all over the track. So it performed really well for me. And a couple of things that I noticed when I picked these up is one, it's a lightweight tire. And that's pretty normal when it comes to a performance tire. In fact, I weighed this in a 120-80-19 versus the Dunlop MX-34 in the same size. It's almost a pound lighter. So it's a very lightweight, which means also it was very easy to mount. It's probably one of the easiest tires that I've mounted. But that comes again at a price 
with this rubber compound and that soft, softer carcass construction, it's going to break down faster. And that's just something that you have to be okay with when you're buying a set of these tires. I also noticed too, so the tread design is very aggressive, but you notice too that with these side lugs, something that kind of stuck out to me is with most tires that I'm seeing nowadays, what a lot of companies are doing is they're putting little reinforcement bars at the base of these side lugs. And those are there just to help you know, control the amount of flex that you're getting with these lugs and prevent them from flexing too much because if they do flex too much, you get really good traction, but they can tear easily. And so again, with Hoosier focusing more on performance, they're not utilizing those because they want these lugs to flex a little bit more to give you as much traction as possible. So again, 20 indoor track conditions, 25 intermediate, 30, a little bit firmer compound, great for hard pack situations. Then you move on to the front. So there's two options with the front. They don't even make a 20 front tire because if they were to use a compound as that soft, the lugs are probably just gonna not hold up. They're gonna roll, they're gonna fold, and it's probably, just, it's gonna be too soft for motocross and outdoor conditions. So they just have a 25 and a 30. But here's the important thing to know. There is a 25F and an S, same goes for the 30. The S has a wider profile and the F has a narrower. So this is a 25F that I have on the table. This is the front tire that I just used racing this last weekend. And it's really gonna be rider preference. If you ride on tracks that are very rutty and you really need your bike to get into those ruts and stay and follow those really well, you don't want to maybe climb out of the ruts once you're inside those, I would say go with the F model just because of the narrow, narrower profile. But if you're riding in sandier conditions or tracks or conditions that don't get as ruddy and you're looking to maximize contact patch with the ground, you could try the, the S model. So again, that's just gonna come down to rider preference and the conditions that you're riding in. But again, a couple things to note with this. The tread design, nice and spread out, cleared mud well when I was at the track, which like I told you early in the morning, 80 acres, it is basically like a mud race. And so you need a tire that's gonna clear mud well. And these did a pretty good job with that. But really good braking. And that's something that I don't really pay attention to too often with the front tire, but I just noticed that, you know, as I was coming into some of the areas at this track, I get on the brakes and it just felt like this tire was just biting the ground and giving me a really good stopping power, which it was really nice to have. And then with the side lugs, so this tire has a nice round profile and something again that kind of stood out to me is when you look at it, a lot of tires, you notice that these very side lugs here on the very edge of the sidewall, a lot of times they'll come more up, but these you can see that they, I feel like the angle is more out. And I actually did ask Hoosier about that. And they said that they did purposely design these side lugs to come out a little bit more versus up. And that way, as you lean the bike over, they wanna get these side lugs touching the ground as soon as possible to maximize your contact patch and it gets you that grip. And I noticed too, again, with a front tire, what I look for in a front tire when I'm riding is I look for what I call trustworthy. And what I mean by that is I wanna be able to come into a corner, I don't wanna be able to start laying the bike over early, I wanna be able to be on the brakes, and I just wanna be able to know what the limits of that tire are. I wanna be able to know how far I can push it before that tire is gonna to wanna to break loose and push on me. And if I have a front tire where I don't have any of those weird moments where you're coming in, you're leaning the bike over, or you maybe you're on the brakes and all of a sudden you don't know what happened, but the tire washes and pushes on you, I don't want that in a front tire. And with this, I didn't have any of those moments. And the same thing went when I was riding on the 30 front tire as well. And then Gavin Bruff, the rider I told you about, he rode the, the MX30 front tire at Bunker Hill and he gave similar feedback. He just said, hey, it didn't do anything unpredictable. It was, you know, I trusted it all weekend. It performed well. He even went and rode a Paul in California, said the same thing there that the tires performed really, really well. But again, just a couple things to note here. You know, these side knobs, again, they don't have any reinforcement bars at the bottom, so they give a lot of flex. But again, you are giving up some of that durability. But like I said, when it comes to Hoosier tires, if you're looking for, for, for performance, that's who they build these tires for. And I can tell you after riding on them, they're phenomenal, they do a great job. You know, they're pricey, but you gotta know what you're buying here when it comes to these. If you have questions or comments though, we would love to get those answered. I will give you more feedback if you need some, so make sure to leave that down below. Also, I'm gonna get more time on these. So after you've watched this video, if you wanna know, you know how much life I got out of these before I decided I just need to swap them out, or ask down below, I will give you that information. To grab a set, click on the link, 
or head over to RockyMountainATVMC.com. Hey, we ship for free over 75 bucks. If you want to stay up to date on videos like this, get subscribed to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel, hit that notification bell, and you'll be good to go. I'm Chase, and we'll see you on the trails.